May we have a word of silence for the tragedy that took place in Orlando, Florida with the senseless murder of 49 people. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. <laughs> Ms. Graves? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Protegira? Uh, here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smigel? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegira? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portagiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Snigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. Uh, for your benefit, the process which we will follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is take up a number of the, we're going to take up the public hearings that are on the agenda. At the conclusion of the, of the um, three public hearings, we will move directly to the regular agenda. Um, we typically vote on all of these matters in just the way they are numbered. We may move one of the matters up to accommodate uh, a council member who may um, have to leave early. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the city council on a non-agenda item, you'll be given that on a non-agenda matter, uh, something like new business, you'll be given that opportunity. But uh, in order to have your name called, uh, you must have signed a slip of paper which a clerk has made available at the rear of the council chambers before the meeting began. And so we're going to move directly to public hearing one, but Madam Clerk, I need the, uh, the slips. All right, you can call public hearing one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day. Uh, to hear comments approving the terms and conditions of a lease of space in City Hall to SunTrust Bank for the location of an ATM machine. Okay, hold on just, just a sec. Um, okay. Okay, public hearing one. Okay, you got, you called that. Yes, right? sir. Okay, there are no members of the public signed up to speak on public hearing one, so you can call the roll. Please. I have an ordinance approving the terms and conditions of a lease of space in City Hall to SunTrust Bank for the location of an ATM machine. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigo. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day to hear comments on the conveyance to Balance Builders, Inc. of a certain parcel of property located at 4014 Powhatan Avenue for the sum of $18,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement. We'll call the roll. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Balance Builders, Inc. of a certain parcel of property located at 4014 Powhatan Avenue for $18,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Right, public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day to hear comments on the issuance of up to $175 million in general obligation bonds of the City of Norfolk, Virginia, to finance a portion of the city's capital improvement program. All right. Just a second. Ellis James, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mrs. <laughs> Graves. Members of the council, and Mr. Jones, my favorite city manager. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place here in the city of Norfolk. And I must tell you that uh, I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but as I read through my docket, I saw three. $175 million is a pretty good chunk of change for the taxpayers. But as I read through the docket, I got the item R27, which talks about 
uh, an ordinance to repeal section 16177 and 16184 so as to dissolve the Norfolk Municipal Bond Commission. Now, I'm, I'm not totally deranged. I, I believe that the one thing an action, proposed action, has no impact upon or consequences for this public hearing three item. But I just want to be sure about that, that we are not later in the meeting going to take action on an item that could have carryover impact, that kind of thing. Yes, so so I rely upon the expertise of either the city attorney or my city manager. Yeah, that's correct. The, the, the R27 is unrelated to these uh, okay. issuances. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, Mr. James. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to point out, Mr. James, I don't know if you got here early enough, but our media team is now um, doing a new video that does an overview of all of our items on our agenda and they discuss a lot of the re rationale before it's a really neat video that they start producing that explains goes through all these and i think they're running them 15 minutes before each meeting well we were still in the informal session downstairs right, right. i'm just i'm just letting you know part. yeah yeah so thank it's you a good video. i appreciate you should, yeah. the heads up yeah. thank you okay you can call the roll please look at that Thanks. I have an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale by the City of Norfolk, Virginia of up to $175 million in general obligation capital improvement bonds. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. An ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale by the City of Norfolk of up to $360 million in general obligation refunding bonds to refund earlier bond issues. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2. An ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale by the City of Norfolk, Virginia of up to $160 million in water revenue refunding bonds to refund earlier bond issues. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? R3 is an ordinance to grant a certificate of appropriateness for replacement of the roof on a residential property at 534 Pembroke Avenue, located in a historic district. All right, this item is an appeal of a decision of the Architecture Review Board regarding an application for a, cer a certificate of appropriateness. Our procedure mm -hmm. for this um, item will be as follows. The city will present a summary of the, a summary of the application and the proceedings before uh, the ARB. Next, the person noting the appeal will present his or her case, and then other people may participate, but the entire presentation uh, should uh, last no longer than 15 minutes, Mr. Ottinger. Each member of the public who signed up to speak on this item will then be individually called and may comment on the question of whether or not the appeal should be approved. Each speaker's comments will be limited to three minutes. The following all comments by the public, the applicant will be given an opportunity to provide any rebuttal. He can have three minutes for that. Following uh, rebuttal and any discussion or questions by council members, a vote will be taken as to whether the appeal should be approved. Okay? All right, Leonard. Mr. Newcomb, you want to identify yourself for the record and we'll start uh, the clock. My name is Leonard Newcomb. I'm the Assistant Director of Planning. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, as the mayor introduced, this is uh, an appeal from a decision by the Architectural Review Board. This pertains to the property located at 534 Pembroke Avenue. Uh, the property owner, Mr. Richard Ottinger, appeared before the board on November 14, 2014. I'm sorry, November 10, 2014, to seek the ability to replace <coughs> a slate roof on his property. He is located in the historic district of Ghent. He is required to go through and obtain a certificate of occupancy for any exterior alterations to the houses that are located in the uh, historic district. In this case, he presented a um, 
evidence that the roof on his house, which was a Vermont green slate, had deteriorated to the point where replacement was not possible. The board granted him a conditional approval on November 10th to replace the slate shingle with a composite shingle. Mm -hmm. The existing shingle on his house was a 10 inch wide shingle. He was seeking to use a 12 inch composite. They asked him to come back after determining uh, where he could locate the source of a 10 inch shingle. Uh, on August 24th, 2015, he came back to the board. In July of that year, a month before, a uh, construction crew had replaced a large portion of his roof uh, without the certificate of appropriateness that's required, and they had done so with a 12-inch composite slate. The board's action in August of 2015 was to ask, uh, essentially they continued the item and asked him again to find a 10 inch wide composite slate. He returned to the board in December of 2015 and uh, furthered his request to use the 12 inch composite shingle. The board then voted to deny the application and he filed an appeal. The appeal process was described by the mayor. Um, the city's presentation is the one I am making now. In the regulations of the zoning ordinance pertaining to historic districts and certificates appropriateness, appeals uh, presented to the city council can be approved if the council finds that one, the proposal is appropriate to the character, appearance, and efficient functioning of the district and does not adversely affect the primary character of the historic district. Number two, the proposal is generally consistent with any applicable design guidelines adopted by the Architectural Review Board and in effect for the applicable historic district or historic overlay districts. In this case, the ARB Architectural Review Board determined that the shingles proposed were not in keeping with the adopted guidelines, section 2-2 uh, roofs, which uh, essentially indicate that if you're going to replace an original material, such as slate for a composite, then it should replicate the original materials in color, shape, size, and pattern. And uh, this is not the same size. Any questions? Any me? questions for Mr. Newcomb? So right. Len, Lenny, the bottom line is it's two inches off. It's it's two inches on each shingle so that it collects over the size of the, of the roof and the, the general appearance of the roof is different than it would have been otherwise. But that's the but as that is we, correct. We are that, talking about we're narrowing it down to that one point. That's all we're talking about. That is correct. Uh, he was given permission to go from the original slate to the composite. Mm -hmm. So and so the point is is that it didn't meet the somehow it went from the, the two inch variance. Correct. Any other right. questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ottinger. When I call your name, if you'll identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address, please. Richard Hooper Ottinger, 534 Pembroke Avenue, Norfolk. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, I'm here before you on the appeal of my application for certificate of appropriateness. Um, this was a uh, simple error. Um, the uh, approval for the 10 inch um, synthetic slate was in November of 2014. Within a couple of weeks of that meeting, I embarked on a campaign for Virginia Senate, which took uh, every waking moment other than the time I had to spend in my law office and with my family. Been there, done that. Yep. And uh, it, eight months later in July, uh, there were some significant leaks. I called my contractor, asked him to come out and repair the areas that needed repairing. Uh, within a day or so, he had replaced large sections with 12 inch versus 10 inch. A simple error, I didn't make clear to him that he needed to use a 10 inch version of the slate. Um, I've got a couple of things to hand out. Mr. Daughtry. First, this is. Um, on top, you'll see this is just a simple petition, uh, which reads, we believe that the synthetic slates used to in the repair of the roof on 534 Pembroke are a significant improvement over the old slate and look much better. Pretty simple issue. 
It is signed by over 30 folks, the vast majority of whom live in historic houses in the historic district. These are the folks whose property values would be most affected if they believed that somehow this two-inch variance made any sort of material difference. Um, the next three pages are pictures of the roof taken this afternoon from the center of the public right away, which as I understand it is the appropriate place from which to try to view those improvements. And as you can see, um, it is difficult at best to see the roof in any event. And even if you can see it, to be able with the naked eye from 60 or 70 feet away to determine the difference between 10 inch and 12 inch is, I think, unreasonable. Um, I also have a number of pictures of some of the houses in the historic district. These are contributing historic houses that show the variance of types of materials and applications uh, of various roofing materials. And there are several pictures of historic contributing houses in the neighborhood which have synthetic slate. And they have varying sizes of this synthetic material. Um, the, there is um, a draft material decision matrix um, used, as I understand it, by no, that's okay. But that was the three-minute timer. Trace, no, he's got 15. Um, used, used by the ARB Planning Commission in their determination of when materials uh, other than original can be used. And there are two items that I wanted to point the uh, City Council's attention to. One is a factor of is the original material affordable, expense versus investment, life cycle analysis, maintenance cycles. Uh, it is, it's it's clear that this material is significantly less expensive than a real slate. There are also, once you uh, run through that, it takes you down to consideration for substitute materials. Does the new material closely resemble the original? Is the new material structurally compatible with remaining materials? Is the new material more durable than the original? And is the new material sustainable? And the items that are sustainable are embodied energy, energy efficiency, toxicity, and recyclability. Um, the synthetic slate hits all those, uh, without a doubt. Embodied energy simply means the amount of energy it takes to get the whatever the product is from its origins to its final place of in installation. Uh, real slate, you got a manpower, energy to get it out of the ground, to get it in the right size, to ship it across the country, to install it. Um, this is a significantly better product. I'm not quite sure why I'm talking about it because we're at the point really we're just talking about two inches, but I wanted to give the council some background on some of the considerations that went into uh, the process. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I brought samples of the synthetic material at, at the, one of the last um, ARB meetings. A new member of the ARB looked at it and was um, surprised at how good it looked and how uh, far these products have come since they were first instituted and introduced uh, decades ago. Um, if anybody would like to, I would like to see it. This is synthetic. Correct. And the other is slate. Correct. The, the original was slate. Okay. It's a Vermont green slate. Um, there are three houses in the neighborhood that have it. It's a uh, it's a 100-year slate that lasts about 90 years. The dark gray slate that you see on most houses in Norfolk is a 100-year slate that lasts 200 years. So luck of the draw on my, my end. Thanks. Um, any questions? Okay. Any questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Greta Gustafson. Greta. Yeah. And the folks I, or I'm calling on now have three minutes. Okay. Good evening. My name is Greta Gustafson, and I live at 421 West Butte Street in Norfolk. I also own a contributing structure in the West Freemason Historic District, which is located at 273 West Butte. So like the Ottingers, I am an end user of the design guidelines 
and know that any exterior alterations to that property are governed by the same guidelines in Chapter 9 of the Zoning Ordinance and must receive a certificate of appropriateness. I moved to Freemason in 1977 when the first set of design guidelines went into effect, and I've been there through several iterations. As a member of the Historic and Architectural Preservation Committee, I was an active participant in the development of the current ordinance, which established the Architectural Review Board and the rewrite of the design guidelines. I currently serve on the Architectural Review Board as the Historic District Representative. I was present at each of the ARB meetings that reviewed Mr. and Mrs. Ottinger's application for a certificate of appropriateness <coughs> for roof replacement. And at both the August 24th, 2015 and December 7th, 2015 meetings, I specifically asked Mr. Ottinger why he did not follow procedures when he was well aware of them based on his initial application. And he was not totally issued a COA. He was issued it on condition that he present the, the synthetic material that matched in color, size, and um, pattern. Um, Mr. Ottinger was not able to answer why he didn't follow the procedure and went ahead and, and got through it. I would like to believe that his actions were not taken to circumvent the known procedures, but sadly I don't. Based on my firsthand knowledge of Chapter 9 of the Zoning Ordinance, the City of Norfolk Historic District Guidelines, and the appeal before you, my recommendation is that you deny the auditor's request for a certificate of appropriateness because it is not consistent with the applicable design guidelines because it will adversely affect the character of the historic district and because it also will adversely affect the process and effectiveness of the Architectural Review Board. Thank you. Thank you. That's Robin cool. Ingram. Your Honor, members of City Council, my name is Robin Ingram. I live at 540 Pembroke Avenue, um, 23507, <laughs> and I speak today about my next-door neighbors, Lisa and Richard Ottinger's appeal. My husband and I moved to the city of Norfolk with Norfolk Southern in 1983. I was appointed to the Design Review Committee in 1985 and served until 2000. At the time of my appointment, my father, a former mayor in Roanoke, Virginia, cautioned me to always remember that there was a delicate balance between public and private sector interests. Um, there is no question there was a problem about this procedure and that mistakes were made. But it is my understanding that at one point in the proceedings, there was a compromise offered by Randy Lyle, which offered them the opportunity to go to another architect, have embellishments, copper embellishments done for the roof and bring it back for review. They went and they did exactly as the committee suggested and they brought it back for review. The proposer of the compromise was not there and he, um, the, the, the proposal was thrown out and they were then asked to replace the new roofing material and to, um, to to put up a new roof with the new specifications. Um, I think that is very important, and I know when I was on design review for many years with the leadership of Henry Shriver and other members of the committee, that we worked very hard when we had difficult situations like this to find a compromise, and that we wanted our city to be known as the place where people wanted to develop, where all of these new wonderful young people that are moving into my neighborhood and other historic districts are assuming the burden of great financial uh, responsibilities to maintain that property. I have walked the district and looked at every single house in the Mowbray Arch area, and you would not believe the complexity of design, the different materials, and all of the different things. I cannot see under how I understand the guidelines and 
from my experience, which was the reason I was appointed to this commission, my experience with the National Trust and with preservation um, interests. And I, I respectfully submit that, our, that I would like to urge City Council to go back to the original compromise and that I think this would be a fair and balanced decision on behalf of the City Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. All right, I have a number of folks who I'm going to call their names who have, who have uh, actually um, noted that they're a proponent um, but would, uh, would uh, decline to speak. That would include uh, Jeff Cooper, uh, Terry Kircher, Marcellus Kircher, of course, uh, William Ingram, um, Linwood Beckner, um, Rachel Spruill, Edward Kemple, and Mel Price also is here to answer questions. Uh, and um, she lists herself as a proponent. Okay, that I got a lot of slips of paper up here, but I think I've called everybody who wants to speak on this matter. Is there anybody else who would like to address the council? I have a question. Okay. All right, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. If we if we deny this, then what are the ramifications for the homeowner? D does he have to remove the roof? And how do we? I mean, that's a cost. So how do we regulate that? And what is is what is the remedy here? And by the way, while Leonard's coming up, we have two ordinances in front of us here. One, the, the, which we'll call first, is to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the replacement. And if that succeeds, then we will not move on to 3A, as I understand it, right? Uh, y y yes, and I think that we've over-supplied you belts and suspenders. I think that the vote on this ordinance will suffice okay. out of way, that if it right. succeeds, I was it's going to granted, get to that. If, if it does if, not, if, we've, if yes. both of them failed, we'll bring yeah. you. Okay. Yes, there's no right. reason to do it twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Leonard, that you want to? I think so. Essentially, in the historic district, you need a certificate of appropriateness for exterior alterations. There was never one issued for this. If you approve it today, you are granting that certificate. If you're denying it, then he will have to come back and continue working with the uh, Architectural Review Board to come up with a compromise. But that compromise may never occur, and he has to take it off. He was, you know, and, and, and perhaps what gets overlooked is he had a slate roof. Right. Enormous expense to replace. They gave him the opportunity for the composite roof, but they wanted it to stay in keeping with the character of what was on that roof. But the homeowner in this case, Richard, as he told us and fell on his sword, has said that he was campaigning at the time. It was 24-7. He had a builder that did it, and he lost track of it and being able to keep it up himself. Do you agree with that? I, you've I heard can't that, agree you, or disagree with You've it, heard that from him in the past. I heard though, it, Mark. yes. Okay. All right. Anything else from mm. Thank you, Mr. Newcomb. Okay, so we'll... Uh, well, kind of, but I just, I'm just wondering if this is like a an improvement that like a homeowners association doesn't approve or like a condo association doesn't approve that let's say he he doesn't get the certificate of appropriateness from us and three years from now he decides to sell his home does this does not having the certificate of appropriateness for the roof impede his ability to sell the property without having to remove the roof get the certificate of appropriateness and put on a roof basically of the same kind, just two inches smaller? Um, huh. Yes, it would be a complication that if this were not resolved, that a potential buyer would be looking at stepping into his shoes and having to deal with it. So either he would have to um, make it go away or the buyer would. So yes, you're right. It would be, if it's not resolved before a sale, it would be a complication in a closing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So an I vote Gosh. would grant the certificate. All right. Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegira? Aye. Mr. Riddick? 
You know, this is the second time uh, in 24 years uh, that an issue like this has uh, come before me. Uh, in the early 90s, there was a home on the corner of Redgate and Hampton Boulevard that had the same issue. And uh, it was denied. Uh, I don't, the campaign in 24 7 doesn't, you know, doesn't get it with me. Uh, I've been campaigning, like I say, for, you know, for years. And certain things you just have to pay attention to. And uh, I vote no. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic to the Ottingers, but it was pretty clear that what the rules were on this, and we as a council have approved those rules. And I would find it very difficult for us to vote to allow this and then let the next person come up and they'd say, well, the last time you let that happen, how come you're not going to let me happen? And then we lose all the integrity that we as a council established when we established both Historic Preservation District and the ARB. Um, I find it very curious that we've decided that that didn't matter. So I think things like this matter. And I'm sorry about the loss of your income, but uh, you knew the rules when you went into it. You knew it when you bought the house. Well, that's what we all do when we buy an historic house. And that's how we keep our district looking as good as it does. So, no. Mr. Wynn. I, uh, I'm sensitive to the ARB and, and the role they play. And it's a very important role in our city. Uh, I went by and looked at the house a couple of times. I thought I had the wrong address because I couldn't see anything that stood out to me to be offensive mm -hmm. or detrimental to the neighborhood. I thought it, it looked fine. Uh, I think there are exceptions, so I vote aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, so there's no R, so the certificate is granted and yes, there's no, uh, we're not going to call R3A, okay? So for those of you who came down, I appreciate you coming down and expressing your position on this. Yeah, Thank you. Good. R4, please. R4 is an ordinance granting a Granby Development Certificate to permit the renovation of an existing warehouse to provide residential dwelling units on property located at 210 East 22nd Street by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. All right, and Mr. Grady Palmer is here to answer questions. He's more, he's closer to the Democrats. All right, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smagel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance to approve and adopt a schedule of fees related to the cost of implementing and enforcing the uniform statewide building code. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smagel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an automobile storage yard for DAC Warehouse LLC on property located at 429 West 24th Street by 7 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And uh, Mel Price is the proponent in the applicant. Mel, where are you? There you are. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Call the roll. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or seven. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through for Starbucks on property located at 7600 Hampton Boulevard. And by a 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay. Um, Mr. Klein, Thomas Klein, is here to answer questions if we have any. Um, Mr. Blevins is also here to Steve Blevins to answer questions. Um, Raymond Hicks um, does not wish to speak, but is going on the record for support. The same with, with Denby uh, Marchant and David Machapaw. I hope I got <coughs> that right there. Proponents, as are Rachel Sproul and Edward Kemple. Um, any questions? For those that drive on that corridor, um, there's no concern about traffic. I don't think, I, I know Starbucks will bring more traffic than Church's Chicken. Yeah, it's actually there, but, reduced the number of yeah. entrances. And they're not changing, yeah, I saw that there's no ingress, egress onto major roads from there, so that's right. good. Okay, we call I roll. think at that corner on the back side, maybe we could look at maybe like a yield 
light I think or it's something. Actually pretty good use. I but don't know what in the world you're gonna put I in turn on the I turn on the colonial every day. That's where my office is. Oh, and no, this, is, this, this is this is the is other one. This is the other one. Oh, oh, I'm already this at the other the one. Up. Sorry. <laughs> you got your Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> Need the good drink some Sorry about that. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. <laughs> Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. All right, R8. R8 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit a commercial drive through for Starbucks on property located at 2000 Colonial Avenue, That's Unit 12. <laughs> and for these three items, Mr. President, Planning Commission recommends approval on a 7 0 vote. Okay, we have a number of folks who have, are down here on this matter. Most of you have, have indicated your willingness just to be here in support and not to speak. Um, uh, let me, um, I, I've been looking and I don't see anybody who is really, who is here to um, offer any opposing views, but let me go through the list just to make sure. Um, Robin Thomas is here to answer questions, if any member of the council does. Robin, where are you? I'm sure you had your hand in this. Okay, there you are. Um, okay, Kirsten Tinch has a traffic question. Ms. Tinch, would you? Answer traffic questions. You got it? No, You're here answering. to answer traffic questions. Okay. Um, the engineer, Joe Boucher, is here to answer questions. Um, Jack Plumgren is a proponent. Linwood Beckner is a pro did Mr. Jack, did you want to speak, Mr. Plumgren? I, I did. Okay. I didn't want to speak first. Okay, That's but okay. you are. But I think you're winning, so I'd be, you know. Mm. Okay, why not? Okay. Then, no, that was not well, what I meant. Well, even if you're winning, you don't have to talk. <laughs> <don't. laughs> you you may change our mind. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay. Oh, can't help. Okay. Now that we've had a little humor. Okay. I'm here to speak on behalf of the the Starbucks. Uh, many of you know I'm a small business owner in Ghent, right. um, and you know one thing about Starbucks is it attracts customers, it brings customers into the area. Um, we've heard a question about traffic. Um, I, I relate back to one day when I was complaining about turning off of uh, 21st Street onto uh, Collie Avenue and how that light would change three times before I'd get through the intersection. And uh, my good friend Klaus reminded me that those are all customers of ours. And that isn't it great that we have those kinds of backups uh, today when many years ago we didn't have those in Git. Yeah. So uh, traffic to me is not an issue. If it were, if we start uh, staining against projects because there'll be too much traffic, uh, we would be, in essence, halting business growth. Uh, the only other thing I, I wanted to offer, I offered it at the Planning Commission. I'll offer it here. Um, I have a 33-year-old uh, daughter and two grandchildren under the age of two. And when I told my uh, daughter that this issue was a big issue for, for Norfolk, her comment was, if you had to take two children out of car seats to go in to get a simple cup of coffee, you would be very happy to have a Starbucks drive through So uh, I am a proponent of this, and uh, I hope you are as well. Thanks. Make Thank no you. mistake That's about well, it, I favor the Starbucks. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Okay, Linwood Beckner. I think you indicated. Okay, you we're good. To okay. Speak in behalf. We're, you're, we're okay. You can yes, always sir. screw it up, Linwood. Okay. <laughs> John Cooper, Angel up. Shen, uh, Dave McDonald. If anybody would like to come to the podium and, and speak, uh, but everybody so far, including Eric Cooper, is not speaking. And uh, Eric <laughs> and Jeff. Okay, Jeff Cooper's not speaking. Okay. Joe Haskell, Margie T. Camp. Linda Stalling, Terry Kirchner, Jeffrey uh, Poston, Andrew Stein, Jim Hurley, Monica Cooper, Mary Yelnick, um, looks like Canville Cooper, the whole family, Alan Stein, Eric Stanley, twice, uh, George Vick, Betsy Cooper, there you go, Hannah Cooper, Matthew Fine, Hugh Tierney, Richard Ottinger doubled down. So you're trying to get support on the Cynthia Vasquez, Wick Smith, Allison Cooper, Edward Kaufman, and the famous Charles Cooper. Okay. Did we get everybody? 
I think we're ready to vote, actually, if it's okay with y'all. I mean, I don't unless somebody's got something they really need to say. Okay, you can call the roll. This has been an interesting process to watch this from a, from a distance, uh, how the Planning Commission and the community has finally come together over this, to be quite honest. It was didn't seem like that to start, but I, this is actually a very healthy thing that's happened here, I think. So, I, I think ahead. they listened. Yeah. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. This Starbucks is going to be right across the street from my office, so I can't wait for it to arrive. I vote aye. It's a conflict. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Because I'm buying Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Uh, just a quick note. Um, when I first heard about this, I posted it on my Facebook page and to get feedback, and it was interesting to see some of the comments. I just wanted to caution those out there that were critics initially of this because it was coming back that it wasn't fair to another coffee shop that was located by it because I had made the comment that I support both local uh, small businesses and Starbucks. If it's coffee, when you have three young kids, you drink it whenever you can get it, no matter where it's from. Um, and people were making comments about that, um, that council, if we support this, is not pro-small business. There's a lot of studies out there that show that this Starbucks will actually enhance um, the business of the uh, of small business around it, including the other coffee shop. But it, I'm cautious and warning, particularly uh, one individual who wrote a whole article about uh, this, um, is that it's not council's place to uh, knock out competition um, with zoning, at least in my, my belief, that if there's, there's a little bit of free market here, and, and if there's an opportunity to go in here, we shouldn't vote against a coffee shop just because another coffee shop is across the street. And I think that was indicated multiple times that this council then is not pro small business by allowing the Starbucks to come in. And I just really disagree with that um, altogether. I think this council has done a lot of um, votes on small business over the last couple of years. A lot of restaurants have popped up in that area as well as downtown Norfolk. And so um, I, I just want to make sure that that's noted. I w it was just interesting to see that some people have made that comment. And I think that was unfair uh, towards council. I. Dr. Wibley? Um, I'd just like to comment about the Cooper family and Ms. Thomas, who have uh, taken a lot of time to come talk to me. And more importantly, I think this project has been exa an example of what's exactly right about neighborhood development. We took a plan, they took a plan, that really was not very well conceived, or at least not in keeping with the neighborhood. Listen to people in the neighborhood to make adjustments, to make it much more pedestrian friendly. I frankly would tell you I'm not in favor of the uh, drive through I think um, it's not in keeping with a pedestrian uh, oriented area. I'm saddened, frankly, one of whom would be my daughter, that people can't get out of the car with their children and go in and mingle with the other people like we like to have at a pedestrian oriented. Uh, neighborhood, but if you've got to have a drive-through, this is about as good as it gets because they literally have done an excellent job of controlling the drive-through, uh, the way the drive-through is oriented, so it's not coming off the street and it's well shielded. So, I'm going to support the community, even though it really kind of bugs me. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Look, I, I don't want to belabor this, and and I'm going to vote aye, but I really th this. This project is completely self-contained within a, a parking lot. That the, the pedestrian-oriented piece of it is no, you it, have to park great. in a parking space in a parking lot. But and it then still walk. pollutes. It, uh, drive through well, still pollutes. Then, then you can say that, okay? Yes. And I can't overcome that. But I, this notion that somehow the pedestrian piece is being sacrificed here is something I just don't. Um, it, that's not the way this this corner has developed. It's not the way Hardy's developed. It just I just you know. But the pollution I. If we're going to ban cars, that's one thing. Okay. <laughs> Just All right, so I, I vote. I vote. I vote for okay. it. Okay. Eight a, um, Mr. President. Okay. An ordinance granting a pedestrian commercial overlay district development certificate to permit the construction of a new retail sales and eating establishment on property located at 2000 Colonial Avenue, Unit 12, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. And the final is an ordinance vac vacating a portion of a building line situated on the north side of West 20th Street between Colonial Avenue and Debris Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? 
Tommy, I will say this. I'll get my lemon bars from Stella's and then I'll walk over and get my there coffee so I'm supporting both. <laughs> I vote aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9, please. Thank you. Thank you all for coming down. You're excused. <laughs> An ordinance granting a special <laughs> exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic <laughs> beverages for off-premises consumption Good drink Starbucks. at an establishment known as Elixia on property located at 257 Granby Street. By 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And Rick Henn is here to answer questions. That was the majority of yeah. you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. How about R30? Yes, sir. Okay, just in case. Uh, is Andrew and I have to uh, Angela yeah, Somebody has to do. <laughs> yeah, about 30 minutes. R30 is an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a cooperation agreement with the Economic Development Authority. Dispense with the charter. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know that. I can't find anyone who's. Is anyone here to speak on R30? Okay. Yeah, they're dispensed with a charter. Back, yeah. I, I understand. I see them, but I mean, they they haven't signed up to speak unless we we have a questions. Okay. For reading the ordinance and adopt, Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegero. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate your investment. Part 10, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an automobile repair facility on property located at 5880 to 5888 Poplar Hall Drive by 7 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Mr. Forehand is here to, the applicant is here to answer questions. Okay. Call. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11? An ordinance granting a special exception to. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Ellis, did you want to speak on R10? We got so many slips over here. I'm sorry. But I'll give you the opportunity, even if, I mean, it was, let's hope you supported it. Mr. Fish. Thank you, Coyne. Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Members of the council, Mrs. Graves especially, <laughs> Mr. Jones. Uh, my name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place. Dr. Wibley, thank you for mentioning pollution. Um, I am concerned about the fact that this operation is in proximity to a major church. Uh, also a senior facility where seniors reside on Poplar Halls Drive, as well as um, the question of the homes in the area. Um, I'm assuming, and, and sometimes that's dangerous, but I'm assuming that this automobile repair facility is not going to be in a situation where it will have an impact on the residents, especially in the senior facility, as well as um, the question, I would assume, on Sundays, uh, they're not going to be repairing cars, but you never know that for sure. Um, so that the church would not be impacted. Um, is that a reasonable assumption on my part that we're pretty well protected and have checked those aspects of it out? Mr. Homewood can answer that for you. Okay. Ellis, right here. He's right behind you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Homewood. Okay. Mr. James. Yeah. Good. Um, good. The uh, the automobile repair facilities that are under question all exist already. Um, this is a case where we've had an existing non-conforming situation um, as part of the next application, which is the communications tower. The entire site was brought <coughs> into uh, is being brought into to conformity with the zoning code. Um, as part of this, the existing automobile. Uh, repair facilities, in fact, are being asked to um, provide oil water separation and things like that that will improve the environmental quality of the area 
um, and their operations. In that, in there already like a um, car wash or something or another there that does uh, deals with cars and stuff already. Yeah, th these are all re-existing. This <laughs> yeah. is you know Dale's train station. And, okay, and okay, that that's what I thought. Okay, all right, the Ellis, they're already. I mean, they're pretty much already there. That's what they're. That's what they do. So. But but okay. Mr. Ellis, yeah. you were asking if they would operate other than Monday through Saturday, correct, sir? Well, that, that was a concern because uh, it would be an impact on the church right? Uh, if there was a noise problem. That's why I was asking. <coughs> and, and George, excuse me, did you answer the, the question? I know you yeah, the, said regulations. Yeah. And you know, the hours of operation are your basic daylight hours. Okay. Um, and um, on Sundays, I believe they, they, the possibility is 10 to 2, um, so very short hours. But... Um, Currently, there's no requirement or regulation on these very businesses, so and they the church hasn't objected, operating. have they? No, nobody's objected. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Did we already vote on yes. that anyway? Okay. R11. I'm sorry. R11 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the construction of a communication tower on property located at 5880 to 5888 Poplar Hall Drive, and Planning Commission recommends this on a 7-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? No. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12, please. R12 is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate a used merchandise sales establishment named Salvation Army Family Store on property located at 2340 East Little Creek Road and by a 5-2 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. All right, we've got 15, 18 people signed up to speak here tonight. Uh, again, when I call your name, if you'll come to the podium, Salvation. identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and then your present home address then, and please limit your remarks to three minutes. R.G. Nutter. And Paul, most of them are proponents that work for Salvation Army. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir, thank you very much, Mr. Frame. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, for the record, my name is R.J. Nutter. My street address is 1405 Blue Heron Road in Virginia Beach. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I, I have an honor to represent the Salvation Army. I'm happy to point out, as you already know, your staff has recommended strongly in favor of this recommend of this application. The Planning Commission voted 5-2 to two in favor of this application. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about it so you'll have some basic facts. Uh, the first is the fact that property is zoned C3. It's your general commercial district throughout the city. Uh, the shopping center in which this is being proposed is, has 110,000 square feet. This is not a small center, which means it has the infrastructure available to support this, this facility. It's a 12,500 square foot tenancy in this case. Uh, but, but all the access <coughs> points will remain the same. Parking is sufficient, the drive aisles. All of those things are sufficient to support this facility. Uh, in fact, a similar facility was there previously, and this site has been vacant since December 31st of 2013, just about two and a half years. The current vacancy rate at the shopping center is about 76%. If this is approved, this would take the shopping center to 96% occupancy. Um, significantly about this as well is that this center is professionally managed by Wheeler, a, a real estate investment trust located in Virginia Beach. Um, they're here tonight. Uh, so we have a large number of speakers, Mr. Mr. Mayor, in favor, many of whom will answer questions. But I would like to tell you a little bit about the Salvation Army because that's really what this genesis of this application is all about. Um, first of all, they're a national, highly accredited, rated agency with which anyone would want to seek a tenancy. They currently have four facilities throughout Hampton, Southampton Roads, three in Virginia Beach and one in Chesapeake. The ones in Chesapeake and Virginia Beach are all 20,000 or 15,000 square feet. This facility would be 12,500 square feet, so well within the realm of what we're experiencing in the other cities. None of the other cities have the requirement that we seek a, a special exception or use permit other than Norfolk, and that is why we're here tonight, to add Norfolk to the list of cities that proudly have a Salvation Army family store within them. Uh, they will employ seven to eight employees, um, even though their hours of operation, by the way, are 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. They do not operate on Sunday. This is a retail establishment only. Uh, donations are uh, given to the store at a location with a trailer, which your staff has approved, behind the store, fully screened. And all the donations, by the way, are taken to Virginia Beach and a large processing center where they're processed, cleaned, and redistributed to the stores for sale. 
none of that activity and processing occurs on this site. Um, this will be um, fully taxable, even though they're a 501c3 organization. Uh, they will pay all city taxes at this location. Business license, retail site, all the usual taxes of any other retailer. Um, I, frankly, I'm telling you that um, there, your staff has found that not only they are completely no different from any other major retailer, but they found that evidence of concern raised by others, if I could just finish that thought, Mr. Mayor, um, really has not existed. And in fact, they're a terrific tenant. Uh, the build out of their stores you'll see in pictures and so forth, but you'll find them to be an excellent uh, neighbor for the city of, of Norfolk, with which you already have relationships with the Salvation Army, the Croc Center, and other locations throughout the city. So, Mr. Mayor, I'll yield for questions and have the next speaker. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Joe Lowry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Lowry. I uh, reside at 2148 Helsley Avenue in the city of Norfolk. Thank you for this opportunity to address you on this matter. Uh, for purposes of clarification, I am not in any way opposed to the Salvation Army or any of their work. Um, and I am here tonight to encourage the council to stop the degradation of retail and other establishments along the East Little Creek Road corridor. Specifically, that section beginning at Old Ocean View Avenue running roughly north to Halpern Drive. This approximately 1.5 mile stretch is traversed by thousands of people every day, residents, newcomers, and people affiliated with the uh, naval base there. In this area, there are currently three thrift stores, three pawn shops, two payday loan operations, a car title loan business, eight buy here, pay here, used car lots, a flea market that has been busted for selling counterfeit goods, and another establishment selling used merchandise. Also, several um, automobile repair facilities uh, many of which have degraded um, storefronts. The signage along this stretch is an assault on the eyes. As a whole, this is not part of what makes Norfolk great, uh, nor would the further degradation of this area um, fall into that category either. Some establishments uh, in this area are openly injurious to individuals experiencing financial difficulties, others perhaps beneficial in some ways. On the positive side of things, several medically related businesses operate in the urban wasteland there. Uh, there are fairly recent upgrades at the Roosevelt, including National Tenants, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, Cool Smiles Dentistry, and Hibbit Sports, signs of an upgrading of that particular facility. Another down market retail operation at the Roosevelt will not be an improvement. A fourth thrift store will brand this major artery as Thrift Store Row, a place for secondhand cast offs, one of the biggest concentrations of down market establishments in the entire Hampton Roads region. I propose to use my, my position as president of the Roosevelt Area Civic League to work in concert with neighboring civic leagues, city council and any other city agencies, the East Little Creek task, uh, Road Task Force, and in, any interested individuals. Together, we will develop a plan for facilitating improvements along the East Little Creek Road corridor. Uh, we will have an, a coalition of uh, concerned individuals and envision a planning process of four to six months, uh, at the end of which we would yield positive uh, and precise uh, citizen-driven suggestions. The West Whitehurst Civic League um, voted unanimously 32 to 0 to oppose this down market retail. The Norfolk Planning Commission received 43 pieces of correspondence saying essentially the same thing, only 32 in favor of the down market retail used merchandise establishment. Respondents on Nextdoor.com came out 39 to 11, over 3 to 1 against another thrift store and in favor of improvements. 80 concerned citizens signed a petition opposing the thrift store. I'll wrap this up quickly, sir. The chairman of the Norfolk Planning Commission, Earl uh, Fraley, and future city councilwoman Andrea McClellan were the two planning commission members who voted against the special exception in the 5 to 2 vote. I'm curious about the correspondence the council has received on this matter as well. The core issue in this matter has always been the improvement of conditions along the East Little Creek Road corridor, not opposition to the Salvation Army. At the membership meeting of the Roosevelt Civic League where this was voted on, there were 17 people present in an in a area which has approximately 6,200 residents and an area is the largest Civic League in the city of Norfolk. Uh, thrift store opponents are advocates for improvement along the East Little Creek Road corridor, and this issue is their line in the sand. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Major Stephen Long. Good 
Good evening, Your Honor and uh, Councilmen and women. It's an honor for me to represent the Salvation Army. I'm the uh, Salvation Army Area Commander for uh, the Norfolk area. And uh, we have several uh, residents in, in the community. And uh, one of which uh, I cannot brag on is a family store in Norfolk. And, and I'm beside myself trying to think why. Uh, the Salvation Army Family Store in Chesapeake um, is a neighbor to and has never been a degradation to any other business there in the uh, Greenbrier shopping area. William Booth Boulevard uh, in, in Virginia Beach, that's a pretty upstanding place where the Salvation Army Family Store has a notable reputation. When I was opening up my bank account at uh, Wells Fargo, um, the lady who was assisting me uh, declared that the Salvation Army is a place that she frequented and as a single mother, uh, she appreciated because she could buy new clothing there with tags still on it at a very affordable price. The Salvation Army uh, men, a hundred of which reside in Virginia Beach and are part of the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, are the individuals whose lives are being changed day by day. I'm there in the morning and I see what's going on in the facility and uh, miracles are taking place. Now, our 19th Street Center of Hope, uh, which shelters men, uh, refer men from that program uh, to uh, the ARC. And it's a gateway for them to uh, do something about their homelessness and their addictive disorders. And I'm thankful because the, the ARC uh, is supported only entirely by the income that they're raising through the family store. Uh, we have as a charter in the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center nationwide uh, a high level of uh, success rate in our program. And again, the gentlemen who reside there are, are delivered from uh, these, these uh, addiction disorders and they are really becoming community citizens. This past Saturday, 95 family members was at a cookout uh, seeking rehabilitation uh, and reconciliation with these men. Uh, the impact of the Army's ARC is very, very uh, noteworthy, and uh, to not have a family store in Norfolk, um, I, again, uh, I'm beside myself. I understand the policies, but the family store is not a degradation, but an uplift. And I would say that maybe some of those other less uh, uh, appeasing and appealing thrift stores may close down because of the competition. John Marshall. My name, my name is John Carnick Marshall. I live at 1871 Banning Road, 23518. I oppose the Salvation Army Thrift Store application for the Roosevelt Garden Shopping Center. Since we have three uh, thrift stores within a mile and a half in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Captain Dwayne Burley. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, it's a privilege to stand here. I am the administrator. I'm the pastor at the ARC. Um, I can tell you about all the figures. I can tell you about the stories, but it comes from here. I live the program. I support the program. Our, we have pictures here that we will give to you in just a little bit to show you what our stores look like. Our stores look like any other retail store that you will go into. They are not dirty. They are not dingy. They are well lit. They are well taken care of. And as Major Long uh, said, we are in the process of saving 100 men, Rece receiving them from their addictions, putting them back into the community, many who reside in Norfolk and now will become members of the society, reuniting them with families who live in this community. We are not a degradation. We are uplifting, not only in our stores, but in what we do for our men. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen Liebert. Hi, I'm Kathleen.
Kathleen Lieber. I live at 8041 Wedgwood Drive. Thank you all for allowing me to speak. Um, the issue with the Salvation Army thrift store has nothing to do with all the wonderful work the Salvation Army does. If you could guarantee the other three over, thrift over here. stores no, 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 here. will go, okay. I have no problem embracing the Salvation the Army. Thanks. And um, as I said, we had a wonderful tenant in there previously, Fabric Hut, which was perfect for the area. They did very well there. The problem was with the infrastructure of the building. They had periodic leaks over two years that destroyed much of their inventory and it wasn't repaired. So it, it's more of the, tent, the landlord's problem why we lost the, the fabric cut. And um, the leasing agent has said that they've tried over and over again to get another, a better tenant in there and not in the condition the building is now it needs to be repaired and they've also said that they're not going to do any repairs to the structure until a new tenant is in there so yeah bottom line we can do better thank you for your time thank you denby marchand <clears throat> good evening my name is denby marchant i live at 226 58th street virginia beach virginia 23451 um, i work for wheeler real estate company i am the one of the leasing agents assigned to the shopping center uh, the the shopping center is owned by a group out of mount pleasant south carolina ziff property group uh, they've had the shopping center um, for quite some time and since owner they took over ownership They've invested over 500000 into exterior improvements to improve the facade, to improve the common areas, as well as other capital improvements, including roof replacement. Um, Fabric Hut vacated in uh, December, uh, December 31st of 2013. Since then, it has been vacant with the exception of a couple small short-term seasonal uses, such as um, a Halloween costume store that was there for only several months. Uh, we have actively marketed this space um, through broker contacts, through real estate managers, going to ICSE events. Uh, we were just out in Las Vegas marketing, uh, marketing the shopping center. So we're very proactive. Um, you know, retailers look at several things when they try to identify a site, population, household counts, incomes, education, access, uh, it goes on and on and on. Um, Unfortunately, there's some challenges with the location of the shopping center and how retailers look at it. Number one, they either have a store that's already in the area that serves that trade area. Uh, number two, the demographics or the co-tenancy of the shopping center do not fit their model. Or number three, if you put down a, uh, a bullseye centered over the, the shopping center, you go one mile out, then you start going into the Chesapeake Bay. So you see them looking more for more centralized locations such as JNF Town Center, somewhere where they can uh, take advantage of a larger, larger trade area. Um, <clears throat> this was touched on earlier. Um, I will say that if you were to go into a TJ Maxx Home Goods, if you were to go into that new Nordstrom Racks, I think it closed your eyes and all of a sudden you ended up into a Salvation Army store and you opened your eyes again, you wouldn't know the difference. Uh, it, it, these type uses are very common in neighborhood shopping centers. Um, you see them in Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. Um, and again, this represents the, the subject vacancy represents 10% of the entire GLA of the shopping center. So it would not be just entire um, Salvation Army building as if they were occupying a freestanding building. It's only a portion of a large shopping center. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I will say we have reached out to over 100 retailers on this, and, and I appreciate the opposition's point of view. Um, however, at this time, this is, I, I feel it's a good, foot, a good fit for the shopping center, and I strongly encourage the council to, to support this special exception. Thank, Thank you. you. Jason, Jason Shedlock. My name is Jason Shedlock. I reside at uh, 316 East Farmington Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23454, four, sorry. Um, I am the Director of Store Operations for the Salvation Army. I run all four of the stores that we currently occupy, and I'll be running the new store as well. Um, I have pictures of the current stores um, so that you can see them and see what our stores do look like. Um, I also 
we uh, we put a petition in our store to support our to support us coming to the, North, the Roosevelt Garden Shopping Center. Uh, we had over 200 signatures for for our petition. Um, over 67 of them were of Norfolk residencies, and I have copies of those if you guys would like to see them. Sure, you, you can give them to the clerk. One one of the oppositions was the uh, signage for that are, is is currently on there. Uh, in the shopping center, we have a, a stanchion sign only uh, on the road, and we will only have um, our banner over top of the um, the building. So we're not adding any more signage than is currently available. Great, thank and you. Appreciate it. Uh, Raymond Hicks. All right, the a proponent, Eric Fernandez. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening Council. My name is Eric Fernandez, 5725 West Hastings Arts, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, I'm currently the merchandiser of Store One, Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I also went through the ARC program. I was there for eight months i decided to put in the application and they gave me the opportunity to work for them um stores is, is a wonderful place it's a wonderful place for families to come that have low income to get quality furniture i think in my opinion i think every city should have a salvation army store a family store um wonderful support group here like i said i was one of the 100 men that uh came through the program and was given the opportunity i think the family store will be an opportunity for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David Brady. Good evening. My name is David Brady. I reside at 5836 Newtown Arch, apartment 102, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23462. I am currently one of the managers at the Salvation Army store on General Booth uh, Boulevard. Um, like Eric, I was also in the program uh, four and a half years ago. Um, and for me, uh, the program and the stores are more than just selling clothing. It is a, an opportunity for folks that are, that are down, that have questions, that are hurting. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of families that come in about their, their sons or daughters that need help. And they heard about our Salvation Army Adult Rehabil Rehabil Rehabilitation Program on Virginia Beach Boulevard. So it's an opportunity to help others. Um, like I said, I do manage the store on General Booth. When there was rumor that the store would possibly be moving, I could tell you um, there was an uproar in the, in the community. Uh, there was a senior living center next to us. And, and I realized then how many people actually need, not just want to shop, but need the Salvation Army. Um, and it's that's the way they they furnish their homes and they get their clothing and people that are on budgets really need that like it was mentioned we do get a lot of clothing um, that's donated uh, that's brand new and people like to come in and save some money and we'd be happy and Norfolk would be lucky to have a Salvation Army store and the revenue alone would be great so thank, thank you. you thank you Michael Myers Mr. How about Mr. Ke Kevin Barringer? Okay. Michael Shahan? Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Council. Um, I'm Michael Shahan. I reside at 8021 Buffalo Avenue. I am the president of the Bel Air Civic League. Um, we voted for this project um, to go forward. Um, with zero opposition. Um, I took time before it came before a planning commission to actually go to the Virginia Beach um, location and visit the store and look around to see what it was like. Clean, um, well-staffed, quality products. Um, my wife walked out of there and bought a purse and some pants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I believe that 
a fully <laughs> occupied facility, a shopping center like that, is way better than an empty one. Um, actually, I believe that when you see occupa occupation like this, that future investors would look favorably upon it because the activity is going on. People want to shop here. People think that doing business in this location is a good thing. Um, I own a piece of commercial property here in, 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 in Ward 5, right? My mortgage comes due every month, right? Um, I have to pay my insurance every month. I, um, my real estate taxes come due every month, right? Whether I make any money or not. Um, and if my roof leaks, I got to have the money to fix it. Why we want to stop a business from having the opportunity to pay their bills and actually contribute to the city, I don't know. Um, progress has been made on Little Creek Road. It will continue to be made on Little Creek Road. A lot of good things are happening. Today, I noticed on the way to, on the way home, that one of the check cashing places had actually closed and has moved. Um, that's near the Shore Drive area. So things change. I do have one um, question. I don't know how long the term of the lease is um, that Wheeler has is, is offered them, but in the future, maybe somebody else would want to buy out that lease. I know Azalean at one time acquired old Comet Plumbing, next, I mean, the Comet Hardware next door. Progress happens. It will continue to have you know, happen on Little Creek Road. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and also we have Andrew Stein, who does not want to speak, but he's indicated he has a, himself as a proponent, as did Eric Cooper before he left. So um, that concludes the list of folks. I guess we're ready to vote. Mr. Mayor, okay. um, what is the length of the lease? I'm happy to, thank you very much, Ms. Johnson. It's mm -hmm. a five-year lease with a five-year renewal. And if I could, Mr. Mayor, I didn't get the rebuttal, but I would like to say that we did reach out to the Civic Leagues, and I'm happy to say the two Civic Leagues closest to this voted in favor of this. Okay. Both the Roosevelt Garden Civic League and... Uh, RJ, we don't, we got I'm it. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Um, uh -huh. You all make this difficult. Um, I totally, I, I think that the Salvation Army is a wonderful organization um, with all the things that they do in the community. And I think that, unfortunately, they are falling prey to the stigma of thrift stores, um, those that are not well kept or well run. Um, and those who don't take the pride in what they do in the manner that <clears throat> the Salvation Army takes a pride in what they do and, and how you all um, really endeavor not just to operate a business and raise money, but to actually change lives. And so um, I thought my answer was yes. And then as I was listening, I thought my answer was no. And then when I listened to the last speaker um, who indicated that their Civic League voted for it and that was the closest Civic League to it, um, and then the, 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 and then uh, what Attorney Nutter did say about the two closest Civic Leagues to it um, voted in favor of it. Um, It's very difficult, and I understand that a neighbor, a community, um, may not want a thrift store, but I do see the point that this store is more than a thrift store, and that there's a lot of good work going on here. And I've been in a couple of Salvation Army stores. Um, I, too, like a deal. And um, just looking for little odds and ends things, um, and and they are very well kept, very well run, very clean. Um, and the people who work in them are often much nicer than the people who do work in Nordstroms. So um, <laughs> it, it's tough, but um, I am going to vote <coughs> yes. Ms. Johnson? Um, 
I would just like to say um, thank you for the information that I was provided to know that it has been a difficult task for the communities as a whole for the last three years not to be able to rent out of the, the space, um, which then has an impact on bringing in revenue to your community as a whole. The city, yes, but to have a business in your um, community. Um, I know that Councilman um, Smeagle um, has been working very hard for the community as far as trying to provide um, economic development and partnership within that corridor, which involves many civic leagues. But the opportunity to, pro to provide jobs, um, I am concerned that um, it has been labeled a thrift store row, as someone referred to it, and that the stigma is um, there. Um, however, um, to have a place vacant for since 2013 is concerning. And I do wish that somehow the Civic Leagues, the Salvation Army, um, can somehow come together um, and make this work. So again, thank you for the communities, the Salvation Army, to for providing me the information that is needed. And I vote yes. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Hi. Mr. Smeagle? Yeah, I have a few comments with, um, although Councilwoman Gray's left. Uh, it's probably been more difficult for me in all of this because of uh, taking in all the sides and representing that area. Um, so I do want to make a few comments because in, in uh, take this time to uh, recognize the work that the Salvation Army does. We've always supported your efforts and we appreciate the work that you do for our community and, and many of our citizens in Norfolk. And so for me, from this point, it's never been about the Salvation Army. It's always been about what is the best use for this property um, and, uh, and what's there. But the hard part about Little Creek Road, and, and all of you have been, I mean, most of you have been in Norfolk. Little Creek Road is just one straight road of retail and commercial. I mean, it's just, and over time, particularly with the Amazons and all the online shopping, um, these big roads of retail are just no longer um, desired. There's, there, there's nobody filling these shops. We were talking earlier about, you know, all the mattress stores, you know, that pop up in, uh, we get 7-Elevens and now Starbucks are taking over. These are all the retail components that are surviving um, because you can't buy Starbucks online, uh, a cup of coffee, but I'm pretty sure soon a drone will be dropping off a coffee at your front door. You can order online, it'll be there in 10 seconds. Um, it's coming. So it, it's hard to, when you're speaking to the community, and I have very active civic leagues along Little Creek Road um, that care deeply about what's happening there. And they are concerned about um, the degradation in, in retail and what's happening. But they also need to understand the context of all of this um, on how market and, and retail works. Um, it's not something that, you know, uh, Paul Balance, the former president of the Roosevelt Garden Civic League, we used to say that if we hear uh, from another citizen that they want to Trader Joe's in there that we're going to throw up because we hear it so much about Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's. And, and I, it's hard for me to stand up in front of a group of citizens say and break it to them that Trader Joe's is not going in that shopping center. We can't even get them in some of our higher population, high income areas in the city. So how are we going to get them over here when the market is not showing that it would support that. And so th these conversations are very difficult to have. Um, and it doesn't help when you have um, apps and programs out there like Next Door, in which there's people who sit at home and can instantly complain or say something without having information. I do have to say I'm a little bit disappointed in some civic leagues. They should have taken the opportunity to have Salvation Army and Willer Management come and speak to them so that all sides were taken, but they chose not to do that. Um, I personally am in favor of this. I have no issues with this. My mother-in-law is going to kill me on this vote because she loves coming down to Norfolk and uh, shopping in our thrift stores. And she takes this stuff and sells it on eBay for hire. Uh, and, and that's her income. Um, you know, the, this, I mean, no, I'm serious. That's what she does in her retirement life. This upcycling, you know, is what it's called. It's healthy for our, our community. 
But at the end of the day, I wasn't voted on um, to make decisions on my personal opinion. Um, I was voted on uh, what my constituents say. And I'm troubled with this because there are two civic leagues that supported this. But I've received over 300 emails in opposition to this. And most of it is because they just don't want another thrift store on Little Creek Road. Um, and so I, I, I was voted in to represent them and their opinion of this, not what my personal opinion is. I'd ask that the Willer Management, which I know you guys have done great work over on Little Creek Road, particularly in the East Beach Marketplace, you have some vacant spots. I've been on council for six years mm -hmm. and represent that area. I know you guys have been doing projects. I've reached out to you but haven't heard back. I'd love to sit down with you guys. Um, I'd love for you to sit down with the Little Creek Road folks. Constantly what's brought up, there are no dry cleaners at all on Little Creek Road on that section. Um, with all the military that's coming through, um, you had one little dry cleaner shop. She's left. We'd love to see a Zips or something like that come in there if you can market it. Um, pet stores, how many pet owners are on that side of the city? Our one last little pet store is gone um, that was over there. We'd love to see a, a, even a, a bigger brand pet store there. Or Total Wine. Um, the income level of that side of the city is rising. Um, East Beach has brought in uh, the highest median household income in the city, and there's only really two, one way in and out over there, Little Creek Road or Ocean Avenue, so they're going by this shopping center. So there's, there are other opportunities, and I think that if we get everybody together and we look, and we work with Chuck Rigney, who has been really working with me on Little Creek Road and trying to find some desired retail over there, I think that we can make this happen. But as I said, at the end of the day, I wasn't voted on uh, to, for my personal opinion. Um, I'm going to vote with my constituents on this one, so I'm voting no. Dr. Wibley? Um, when Andy and Barkley and I were working on uh, Ward's Corner and trying to improve that, four kids came to us with yeah. us with a, um offer for a thrift store, and we soundly uh, said no, that that's not what we wanted for that area. And I, j I feel like I need to listen to the neighborhood and and uh, support them on this. So I'm going to say no. Mr. Wynn? I uh, also got a lot of conversation from both sides. Uh, I talked to the adjacent retail person, Taki, who owns Zay Inn. He's in favor of it. He's tired of having nobody over there. I think uh, we do need to upgrade what we're doing, but I, uh, I think uh, the merchants in the center, they need to fill that space. They need some activity. How about I? Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. Thanks for coming down. R13. R13 is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Little Dog Diner on property located at 1917 Collie Avenue. And by a 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Uh, Mr. Basham is here. Mike Basham to answer questions. Okay, Mike. Dispense okay. with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance authorizing the amendment of the revolving loan fund plan as approved by the United States Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration, authorizing the cooperation agreement to be entered into with the Economic Development Authority and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of up to $625,000 in grant funds in furtherance of the Norfolk Revolving Loan Fund plan dated October 2015. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our 16, our 15 rather, right? A resolution approving the formation of legal entities by Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority to facilitate the renovation of the Young Terrace and Diggstown communities. Adopt Steve Morales is here to answer questions. Yeah, yeah. Steve, if he was, I want to answer questions. Steve, and I see John Konak back there as yeah. well. Come on. Steve, mm -hmm. please. Yeah. Okay, hi, Steve. Uh, uh, I, I know this is just to uh, to get, you know, uh, I guess you said an entity together. Uh, but what type of, uh, I know with renovation of young, you're, you're talking about demolition of a certain portion of it, right? Yes, we are. We are talking about select demolition in both Young and Diggs. Uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> with the with the anticipation of the gentrification of Calvert and Tidewater, it looks like you're minimizing or you're reducing the number of uh, of homes that are available for uh, for residents. 
who might be displaced in Calvin and Tidewater. And then, <clears throat> I don't know whether you were there or not, but uh, in the early 1990s, uh, Diggs was renovated to a very, very uh, heavy amount. And so what, what has to be done now? I mean, what's happening? Actually, Diggs was, was renovated in the early 90s, and we are back at a time where we need to do a complete renovation of Diggs. The roofs, the porches, the porches actually that were done as part of the renovation back in the 1990s, they all have to be redone at this point in time. We are working on that now. All the roofs need to be done. But the biggest thing actually with both Young and Diggs is we're bringing in central AC and heat in these communities. They don't have that currently, mm -hmm. so that's part of this project. With Young Terrace, we're also upgrading the electrical system. We have a lot of brownouts during the summer as a result of the, the overload on the system, so that's part of this renovation also. But And with Young Terrace in particular, we have not renovated Young since it was originally constructed back in the early 50s. So how many units would be dis displaced? Would any units be displaced? In Young, we're, gonna, we're taking down 200 units over all three phases. There's 47 units that come down in the very first phase. In Diggs, we'll be taking down 100 units, and it's 40 four units in the first phase at Diggs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> yes. Um, Steve, my question is, where would the people go? When we do our relocation, we actually have, we're gonna have three options. Um, primary, uh, first and foremost is we will be offering what they call tenant protection vouchers, they're housing choice vouchers, section eight vouchers and those will be made available to residents. We'll be working with residents and to find them private housing, um, either within the city of Norfolk or within the area. Where in the city of Norfolk? Where, uh, where landlords mm -hmm. offer um, to rent for our residents um, <clears throat> using a housing choice voucher. We don't control where residents go, it is their choice. But we do have some control because um, There are communities who are already strapped, okay, with, with vouchers, okay? Even some of your communities that are stabilized are now fighting because of, and I have nothing against the voucher system. What I do have a problem with is how it is used and how we take the opportunity or do not take the opportunity to help guide the people into finding the best possible housing until NRHA is finished doing what they need to do to bring them back. So although you're asking me to vote on the, the entity, a legal entity with you, you do not have a plan, what I consider, of where you're going to place the people. There are the, the folks that will be displaced as a result of the demolition. Certainly, we won't have the same number of units back in the community. So yes, there will be displacement through, through that process. We also actually have turnover in the communities. In Young, it's anywhere from 60 to 80 units a year. And in Diggs, it's about 50 units a year. And so there's a natural um, attrition in those communities already. Now, for most of the residents, we're actually hoping that they will remain in the community. What we're doing with the demo, demo, the units to be demolished is we're using them as such as hotel units in some respects. But we'll come in and do a turn of those units. And then so most of the moves actually that are gonna happen as part of the renovation are gonna be single moves. Families either from directly from their units that they're currently living in into a renovated unit or two moves where a family moves into one of the hotel units and then into a renovated unit. What, was anybody on council briefed on this? No. Before, did we, or right. anybody who represents but, the area, were, were, was anybody briefed on this? Um, what did we know? I don't remember being briefed on it. I was invited to be being briefed on it, but I was never. I, I would also like to know the impact on the schools during that time as well. Um, and what happens with the students that are moved out and um, end up at another school, even if it's just for a year, and then have to go back if they're... Re I, when we're, we, can when we, we're moving... When can we're I request moving, that we table sure. this and have a presentation yeah. on it? Can, why don't we continue? You know, would you please, I'm going to... Um, 
why don't we, you want to continue it generally? Yeah, because I'll be out, you know, so we can get September. What kind of, be, what's your time frame uh, sorry, right now? Um, if you wanted to, we have that. Electronic. I would permit you to call in yeah, and participate okay. if, you, okay. if you wanted to. Okay. I, okay, I can okay, do that. Can, will um, Paul be able to hear the brief that's that we have one on the twenty eighth? Uh, um, we can tie him in by phone yeah. for any okay. briefing or meeting, or if he well, was in a condition, he might want to get it separately. Yeah. Yeah. And so, why don't we continue the matter for two weeks? And if we have to, mm -hmm. we'll continue it I after that. That's fine. Separately. But and we'll have you come in and then tell us what you're trying to accomplish. I know part of the effort here is to improve the lives of the folks who are living there as well. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to do that. Okay. All right. June 28th? June 28th, please. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And Mr. Manager, you're going to schedule them? Yeah, the yeah, my surgery is on the 28th, so the I won't 28, be able to so participate. So we have okay. to do it later than the 28th. All right, then. The good. I will just, we'll just hand it off to the first one. <laughs> 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 just skirt that. Okay. Well, okay. Then yeah. we'll move it on to the first full. Be July the 12th. July the 12th. Okay. Does that good. fit with everybody? Okay, that's July good. 12th. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I continue Please. to July 12, Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Um, I, I'm going to vote aye, but <clears throat> there's, there are a couple of things we need to recognize. We don't have an occupants admit program anymore. And so when it comes to Section 8 and making sure that they are, you know, decent housing, there's no way to follow up on that. But the, the rest of it, I guess I'll hold on uh, until it later on. And one of the things I would just uh, encourage the housing authority to do in the future, which is done in the past, starts when when people start paying their rent, put their rent, you know, in an escrow, and so you know if some of them could be close to being homeowners, uh, it's been done before. It's been done in trailer parks out in Ocean View, where uh, the money was put in an escrow for maybe one or two years, and individuals were able to you know buy homes and and get better better housing. So I think we need to be creative because what Norfolk is getting ready to do is gentrify uh, the city. And 99% of it is going to be African-Americans who live in the public housing communities that you're talking about gentrifying. And I think we need a commitment from the city to make sure that we don't you know, repeat some, repeat some of the things that we've done in the past that we are ashamed of now. I vote aye. Mr. Sneagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. R16, please. An ordinance permitting 749 Bush Street LLC to encroach into the right of way of Bush Street and Gray Street with an underground footer and concrete flood wall. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portazero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R17. An ordinance permitting Virginia Natural Gas to encroach into the right of way of Lance Road with an overhead canopy. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portazero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Aye. R18. An ordinance permitting Richard and Judy Levin to encroach into the right of way at 240 West 21st Street with a canopy sign, pilasters, capitals, window trim, and lighting. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Woodley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19. An ordinance granting Blue Marble and Sun LLC permission to encroach into the right of way at 9659 First View Street, approximately 187 square feet, for the purposes of outdoor dining and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20? An ordinance authorizing the city manager to into a right of entry agreement with the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation and Corman E.V. Williams, a joint venture for work related to the Virginia Department of Transportation Military Highway Continuous Flow Intersection Project. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portagero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are 21. An ordinance approving a license agreement with the Western Tidewater Water Authority for the operation and maintenance of a raw water main across City of Norfolk property located in the City of Suffolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Portagero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R22. 
An ordinance finding a public necessity for the acquisition and fee simple of certain property located at 312 and 314 Brockwell Avenue for the purpose of construction of a retention pond. Approving the acquisition of the property by purchase agreement or condemnation and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $46,000 from funds heretofore appropriated for acquisition of the property and all transactional costs. Dispense yes, with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R23? An ordinance approving a non-exclusive telecommunications franchise agreement with Mobileite LLC. Mr. Tron is here to answer questions. Maybe. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R24. An ordinance accepting with appreciation the donation of $5,710 to the city from the Hampton Roads Community Foundation and appropriating and authorizing the use of the funds to support library services and programs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R25. An ordinance permitting Norfolk Outlets LLC to encroach into the right of way of Northampton Boulevard and Miller Store Road with signage. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R26. An ordinance permitting Jack Mavromatis Jr., Louis Mavromatis, and Helen Christie to encroach into the right of way at 117 West 21st Street with signage and an awning. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R27. An ordinance to repeal section 16-177 to 16-184 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to dissolve the Norfolk Municipal Bond Commission. Ellis James? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bye, Ms. Graves. <laughs> Members of the council, Mr. Jones. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place here in the city of North. I'm delighted to hear what Mr. Pishko said earlier, but I do want to find out if I can why the board is, the bond commission is being dissolved. Is it because of lack of activity over the last decade? Is that a fair uh, assumption and digestion of the facts? I don't know that, no. I think it's, I mean, the letter, I don't know if you saw the letter that would accompany the ordinance. No, I the didn't. manager, okay, no. well it had, it, Fairly well, it sets out the reasoning, but I'll let you go ahead and yep. address it. So, thank you, Mayor. So, so there are really uh, two issues. So, <clears throat> the bond commission was uh, established back in the 50s, and that's before we had an independent financial advisor as well as having a bond council. So, having that uh, provides us with what we need much better than a. So, bond this council. is elimination of duplication, so to yes. speak? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R28. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund in the amount of $2,547.25 plus interest Zon. to Zahn Court <clears throat> Reporting Limited based on overpayment of business license tax for the year 2016. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Mr. Wynn? <laughs> Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R29, please. An ordinance to schedule the starting time of the organizational city council meeting at 2 p.m. Friday, July 1, 2016 in the council chamber. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Did you decide on 2, 2 o'clock as opposed to 1? Was there, a, did I see a note? Uh, I had said two. one and then I was corrected by Mr. Two, two, We're doing a lunch in at 12. Yes. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, correct. I thought, I okay, so two o'clock. Yes, yes, sir. I think I missed, I put it out the wrong way. I mean, do any of you guys have a say in this anyway? 
Kind of a figure, yeah, same thing. Yeah, but, I, but I just remember there was some little discussion about does it two or one o'clock. I wanted to, want you guys to. Okay. All right, never mind. Go ahead. Call <laughs> <on>. <laughs> that was my fault. Okay. Yeah. I just may vote no. Because <laughs> I have a say in Would you like me to record you? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Sir, my feelings. Yeah. Aye. Aye. All right, you have a couple add ons. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, Their number R31 and R32. R31. Is an ordinance to repeal section 6 100 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to dissolve the Animal Advisory Board. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R32 is a resolution appointed to three persons to two authorities for certain terms. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.